Hey everybody, it's Mark here at Clockwork Bear, and let me just say right off the bat, wow, we've waited for years for this. We read every single developer interview, watched every trailer, every movie that we can get our freaking hands on. <laughs> we played the demo till we were blue in the face, and finally, it's here. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh, wow. It dropped for us on April 10th, 2020, and, uh, woo! <laughs> Let me just say, I was not disappointed at all. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and review this game. Uh, I've been through it twice already now. Let me just say, right off the bat, I'm gonna say a lot of negative shit uh, coming uh, with this review, because, I mean, as much as I love the game, and don't get me wrong, I do love the game. Absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm not going to let some of the negative stuff fly. And I hope it gets fixed in the next one. And second, um, I'm going to try to do it as spoiler free as possible. But if it appeared in Final Fantasy VII 1997, uh, get over yourselves. You, you know, you should already know what that is. So, here we go. Final Fantasy VII is a complete re-envisioning of the 1997 version. A ground up re-envisioning of the entire thing so don't expect going into this that it's going to be just like it was in 1997 it is not an hd remaster like final fantasy 10 and it is not an hd slash systems upgrade like they did with final fantasy 12. this is a total overhaul which means battle system music uh visuals um everything about this has been redone in a way even the storyline has been reworked in some way to make this a newer product but they pull from the original so you will feel right at home walking into it let's start with the presentation the world of midgar is visually stunning absolutely visually stunning great attention was paid to each and every area to make sure that you remembered it from the original with all of course the graphical upgrades for 2020 going into a mock reactor feels like an actual cold mock reactor with like the uh the pale sickly light of mako and uh, the steel of all the girders and and catwalks and uh, everything that you're going across just to get through to the uh the reactor or like say the dirty boot feel of sector seven right where people have slung together houses from trailers and uh, uh rusted metal and, and and old wood to make this little shanty town or even like say um like in shedra headquarters like the ominous black walls that are lit and you can uh, see very very rich polished marble floors everything is done to make sure that uh, you remember it as it was from the original with all the graphical upgrades of 2020. even the characters themselves are done in such a high level of fidelity that even in the thick of battle um it's very very high detailed which i was very very pleased with even the in-game engine where they were doing cutscenes using the in-game engine rival a lot of like pre-rendered cutscenes uh and the pre-rendered cutscenes in this one are amazing as well but um there's one thing that is really really cool about that that even though this is an overhaul the characters are as you expect like tifa is tifa cloud is cloud Aerith is Aerith, barrett is barrett the Turks or the Turks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As you remember them, like uh, that's how they pretty much appear. At least how I remember them, because we've had years from, like, say, Advent Children or other uh, Final Fantasy publications about not to see how they look, and they look as they should look. There's no surprises. It's just very, very detailed, and my hats off to them to that. Now, there are some people who said that maybe the slums were a little less uh in terms of uh like graphics quality but I, I i would debate that um i still think that they were pretty high quality in the slums as well but they were supposed to be dirty and disgusting you know they weren't supposed to be like the shinra building i think people were wanting like sector 7 to be more like wall market and that wasn't the case they made a visual distinction between sector 7 and sector 5 and wall market so like each one had their own like different look and feel okay and I can see how some people said Sector 7 wasn't as uh, graphically intense, but Sector 7 was supposed to represent like the worst. And that's how I viewed it, at least. Now, as for the music, 
The music to me kind of blended in where I didn't even realize it was going on. The only time that I paid attention to the music in the game was when it was a cutscene and control was taken from me. I don't see that as a bad thing because that means that the music was not jarring enough for me to like break myself out of the environment to listen to it. During cutscenes I'd be like, oh, that's, that's a remix of the original stuff they have remixes that they have some new songs as well and some dynamic stuff. I have two nitpicks over the music later on in the game. One was a techno song, which you are going to hear over and over again. <laughs> and you're going to be hearing the phrase, don't give up in your sleep. Uh, if you're like me and you like to go back and like collect extra experience, then there's one area that you do it that's perfect. And that techno song plays the whole time and it doesn't stop and it gets pretty grating. I've actually stopped farming experience points just because I didn't want to listen to the song anymore. And the other jarring experience I had was with the dynamic music. See, when you're in towns and you go into different areas, uh, the music sh is still the same, but it shifts in tone a little bit, or maybe in tempo or melody. In Wall Market, there's a section where the tonal shift is so jarring that you can actually tell which side of the map you're on by how the music responds. The voice acting. The voice acting is 100% top notch. Uh, Cloud is as I picture Cloud talking. Tifa is as I picture her. The girl who did Tifa, 100% love her voice for Tifa. Tifa is my favorite character, by the way, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, Aerith is great and Aerith has been accused as being kind of like a like an anime girl where she's like happy all the time. And the person who said that, I kind of want to be like, did you play through the entire game? Because Aerith actually gives a very nuanced performance. There's one thing that I want to tell people when they play the game is when you listen to Aerith, especially later on in the game, watch her face and listen to her voice. There are certain lilts and tells that she gives that are very small and very subtle, but she's not this happy-go-lucky anime girl like some people have made her out to be. She's much deeper than that, and it's very important to pay attention to her, especially from mid to later on in the game. I think the girl who did Aerith did an excellent job uh, with her with that very subtle, uh, not wanting to give too much, but you, you kind of can tell that she's holding some stuff back. And that's difficult to do. And it's also difficult to see sometimes. You have to really pay attention to it, but she did an excellent performance. Um, the girl who did Tifa did an excellent job of being pained and conflicted in some of her actions because she does have some conflict going there. Cloud was definitely Cloud, 100%. The dude who did Cloud was 100% on par with uh, as awkward as Cloud can be uh, sometimes. And uh, the guy who did Barrett also did a good... I've always found Barrett to be an annoying character because he has, like, no impulse control. Not bad, but somewhat annoying. And I think the guy who uh, played him, like, picked up on that aspect from the original and really brought it to life, which which made me happy. Because Barrett was, was one of those characters from the original where I was like, nah, I'm not really into him too much. But now that, you know, this new guy has done it, it's like, I'm totally there. And the Turks are definitely the Turks and everybody else. But President Shinra is very ominous. Hojo is, is uh, disgusting. Um, some special nods out to Madam M. Very sultry voice. Oh, what was that? A cry of pleasure? Is this how you like it? How about this? Or maybe this? <laughs> And uh, <laughs> Don Corneo is so uh, mustache twirlingly sleazy that you can't help but smile when he's talking. Don't be shy, little kitten. Shimmy on over and give daddy some sugar. No need to play coy. Nobody here but you and me. Oh, you're even cuter than I thought. Back off. <laughs> this kitten's got claws! I love it! <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed the voice actors uh, for all most of the main cast. That being said, let me, uh, let me say something that I didn't like about that. In Sector 5, 
you have to deal with the kids there. And let me just say, the kids are so disgustingly saccharine. It's like a bunch of plucky little Disney characters. They have this little Peter Panish area that you have to go into. And it's such a bad tone shift. Look, you have to do quests with them. And it's like they have their own little area. And like you kill the monsters in that area. And it's like, why aren't there more of you dead? Like it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. It's like they have this own area that's 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 sanctioned off from the adults, and there are monsters in there, and the monsters are powerful enough to kill Cloud when he's in there, but yet these kids are there. It, like it doesn't make sense. And the worst one, the absolute worst child actor in there is the child actor that plays the Moogle. They don't even have Moogles in the game, which pissed me off. Um, they have one child actor in there that's like the Moogle market vendor, and he's dressed up in a bad Moogle outfit. Um, and he says Koopo after everything that he says, and it's so annoying that it's like, what can I get for you today, Koopo? Oh, are you mad, Koopo? Where are your parents, kid? Why, Koopo? Oh, I need to beat him up for not wearing fucking protection. Oh, God. He's so jarringly annoying. And it, it bothers me. It's like, why? Why, Squaresoft? Why? You know, we have an entire game that's a fantasy game, a role-playing fantasy game, where you're literally fighting fantasy monsters. You meet Red the 13th later on, who is a talking animal. There are Moogles in the game that are summonable, but yet you have this piece of shit as the Moogle vendor? Pro tip, if it comes down to a choice between a really cringy dumbass kid and a Moogle, just have the fucking Moogle, okay? That would have been a lot better than that stupid cringy kid. Thankfully, you don't have to deal with them too much, but every single time that I dealt with them, I was like, I, uh, oh God. That whole area, I just wanted to like section off and like not like go to ever again. It's so cringy and bad. Now, onto the gameplay and the combat and whatnot. The combat is not turn-based, like you would have in regular Final Fantasy uh, VII from 1997. They've moved it more into like the Final Fantasy XV slash uh, Kingdom Hearts, like active battle system, where you are actively fighting. Which is perfectly fine with me. I'm okay with that. Some people don't like it. I like it. But the system has a slight change, and that's with the, uh, the active time battle system. What happens is, is you have ATB, which you have two bars of ATB on each character. And in order to do like a special, which would be an ability, magic, or an item, you have to have an ATB bar filled up for that particular spot. So while you're attacking, you're constantly looking at that ATB bar to make sure you have a bar filled up so you can do like a magic attack or an item or an ability and abilities especially because you're going to be using them a lot but later on in the game there's ways to raise your atb super quick so it doesn't become too much of a problem but um it makes you think on how to proceed because some attacks uh through atb can be interrupted like if you're doing like a long kiraja spell if the enemy's going to interrupt you and you know that they're going to interrupt you it's almost better to like say use a mega potion than use kiraga because the Kriaga won't be uh, won't be so fast, but the item will be instantaneous. And uh, when you get a interrupt, that ATB bar is gone, and you have to rebuild it. And sometimes that's a matter of life and death. Now, with that battle system, there are two things that are just absolutely mind-blowingly annoying. One more than the other. The first thing that gets on my nerves is that targeting can be absolutely useless some enemies have weak spots or stagger spots like uh like it'll be like body left hand right hand body you know left leg right leg or something like that and you're gonna want to target like a specific area to get a stagger in pretty quickly and they say that r3 will do that and then you can switch by going left and right and whatnot but the slightest move of your character or even the enemy that you're trying to hit can sometimes change that target to something else. Only active time battle slot attacks like abilities or magic or item are 100% accurate. Everything else can move at a whim. And I don't know if this is a problem with me or with my system or if this needs to be patched in, but 
they say that you can target with R3 and it sticks and it never does. It, it never has worked for me. Um, I have always like had to like use like ability attacks if I wanted to be 100% accurate. The next thing that is like controller throwingly annoying is when you're fighting and in the thick of battle, you'll see your other characters, like say you're playing Cloud and like Barrett's on one side and Tifa's on another. And Barrett is definitely firing at the same mofo that you are. And you switch over to Barrett and then immediately go into, like, say, an overcharge. The camera change may fuck up the character and turn him around. And he'll throw that overcharge load into the air. Same thing I've had happen to Tifa and Aerith, too. Where I would see Tifa literally fighting the same thing I was. I'd switch over and go to continue fighting with her. And the camera would mess up just a little bit. And then I'd just see her start shadow boxing out into the distance. And she would be like top speed, like running off screen. I'd be like, oh, okay, you can blow special attacks. They'll, they'll sometimes just be attacking nothing forever when you uh, switch to them. I I've had a lot of instances where like on really heavy fights, I wouldn't switch characters. I would just initiate ATB commands from the command menu because I knew if I switched over to them, they might stop attacking what they were originally attacking. And I hope that gets fixed uh, for the next one or in a patch later on. Now, that being said, combat can be super satisfying. I found a lot of the combat, especially when I have, like, say, my best combos, Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett. I would open up with, like, uh, like a triple strike with, like, Cloud and then immediately, like, launch over to Barrett and do an overcharge and focus shot. And then as soon as, like, the focus shot started, I would switch over to Tifa and then do an attack, do an uppercut, and then go into a dive kick, and it's just perfect. This, this synergy of attacks that just happen, this clash of metal and, and particle effects, and it feels really cool uh, to do all that, and it's very satisfying to get them off. And then you have like the real gimmicky fights later on, where it's like, oh, does this mob have a left arm and a right arm again? I wonder what I should attack first. Those ones get kind of boring. Now, Materia. Final Fantasy VII would not be Final Fantasy VII without Materia. And as much as I hate to say this, it's more like Materia Light. If you were expecting a really extensive Materia system, no. Once you max out Materia, it's maxed out. That's it. It doesn't split. It doesn't mutate. It doesn't do anything special. It just maxes out, and that's it. Same thing with every other Materia in the game. Once you've maxed it out on AP, that's it. Now, of course, you get to keep it, and, you know, when you equip it, you get access to those spells, but um, don't expect anything special. There is elemental material in the game, just like the other ones, and uh, let's just say it's not, it's almost as if it was an afterthought. I beat the game with just everybody with, like, healing materia, one barrier, one raise, and one time magic. You know, I never cast a spell on the last bosses. I only cast spells on myself, like... You know, Mana Ward, Barrier, and Cure, and Raise. And that was it. And Haste on one of my characters. In the beginning, they try to make it into a big deal. Like, oh, find your weak point. Use the element. And it's like, by the end of the game, middle to the end of the game, you're getting weapons that are so powerful that you just brute force your way through it. And then there's other materials that are totally useless. Like, say, Bio or Break or Sleep, which I've never used. I've never used them in both playthroughs never used either of those materials and didn't have a problem so like if you were looking for an extensive material system it's just not there and i hope that they change that in the next one and make it a little bit more advanced because this one was a little bit of a letdown summoning materia even kind of more so um everybody gets to add a summoning like ifrit or shiva or uh fat chocobo uh, which is one of my favorites i love fat chocobo or like mugu and chocobo and they're nice and everything, but honestly, the materia for summoning has been done kind of dirty. The summons don't have their own ATB bars. They have to use bars from your characters. Like if you needed the heal from like Aerith and you wanted to do a prey, you could either do a prey or use those two bars on like say Ifrit's like, uh, like mega ability. So you had to make a choice. I mean like, do you want to sacrifice an ATB bar from one of your characters that could have been a heal or attack and use it on your uh, uh, your summon or just use the attacks. Nine times out of ten, especially towards the end of the game, 
the only reason why I ever used a summon was just as like an extra and I never even used like their ATD bars. Like I just used my character's attacks because they were more powerful than the attacks coming from the summon. So that was a little bit of a letdown too. Materia um, was a letdown. I was expecting a lot more and was, was not happy about that. Now, story. This seems to be a big point of contention between people. A lot of people who have finished the game have gotten angry at the ending. I did not. I knew right from the get-go that this was going to be different. It was going to be a different story. I knew even before I picked up the game just from developer interviews that they had reworked the story from the ground up that it was going to be similar but there was going to be a divergence somewhere uh, in the game and I knew that it was going to happen. Even on my second playthrough like I got even more of the story than I did the first time around and it became even more nuanced after that because I paid more attention. The first time I was just mainly getting through. The second time I really took my time and listened to everything. Um, and try to get as much side story as possible. It really, really made me interested to see how they're going to do this for the next one. Um, I'm very happy with the direction they took, that it wasn't just the original. Because honestly, guys, we've already played the original. If you want the original story, like if it made you mad and you wanted the original story, Final Fantasy VII already exists. You can just go ahead and play that, you know what I mean, and get the story there. It's already been done. Um, this one is um, a little bit more broad and a little bit more high planes. And um, now that I've been through it, I'm really, really uh, wanting to see how they close it up, how they can actually close up what they open now, you know, without too many spoilers. So I don't want to say too much about the story, but I do know that it's, it's uh, way bigger than the first one. Like the first one was pretty grandiose, but it was pretty much centered on the planet and this one is more than just the planet it's it's like a whole reality shifting uh thing so yeah i was very pleased with the story now here's the most important part of the review <laughs> was it worth the money did i have fun with it did i get my money's worth out of it was it worth paying full price was it worth a rental was it worth like saying turning in some games for and getting it on a discount or was it not worth it at all? In this particular case, yes, absolutely. It was 100% worth the $60 that I plopped out on it. I would have paid $120 if they'd given me uh, two weeks early. The first time I played through it, I played through with 30 hours of gameplay. Uh, I put it down and I went to go play something else and I couldn't get my mind off of it. Uh, I was like, I gotta go back in. I gotta do a second run. Let me start from scratch. So I started from scratch and did a second run. Ended up spending about 40 hours of gameplay on the second run and actually saw new shit the second time around which I was pleasantly surprised about so yeah I got about 70 hours worth of play out of it out of two runs uh, for $60 it was totally worth the money I would have paid double if I had gotten it two weeks early for sure so if you ask me like hey should I buy this I'd be like yeah in my opinion I had so much fun with it that I would absolutely buy it full price so that's my review of Final Fantasy 7 Remake I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I can't wait for the next one. Thankfully, the stuff that really annoyed me was very short. And the combat mechanics stuff that bothered me, I was able to work around once I knew what they were. Now, it's, it's not really excusable that they're there, but at least I know that they're there. And now that I've told you, at least you know it's there too. You can work around them. And uh, I hope you have a better experience for it. Thank you guys for watching all the videos and sticking with me. And if you like this, uh, you know, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And uh, we'll catch you for the next game, okay? Have a great one. Bye.